All right, so get this. Okay. Remember that whole sci-fi thing, like yeah. matter and antimatter come together? Right. Total annihilation, big explosion. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Turns out it might not be that simple. Oh, really? Yeah, it's way more complex than that. Wow. So we're diving into this new research today. Okay. That's showing scientists have been able to make these crazy hybrid atoms. Hybrid atoms? Yeah, so they have like both mm. matter and antimatter components just hanging out. That's pretty wild. And they're way more stable than anyone thought possible. I'm intrigued. I know, right? <laughs> so this research we're looking at comes from CERN. Ah, CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. Exactly. Big physics stuff. Yeah, they're doing some incredible experiments over there. Always on the cutting edge. Always, yeah. So what exactly did they find? Well, they basically managed to get matter and antimatter to coexist. Like peacefully coexist. Peacefully, yeah. Yeah. And these hybrid atoms. Ow. I know it's huge. I mean, think about it. This could totally change how we understand the universe. Absolutely. This has huge implications Let's for our fundamental understanding of physics. Okay, so before we go any further, sure. real quick, yeah. antimatter, just so everyone's on the same page. Good idea. It's like the mirror image of matter, right? Exactly. Same mass, opposite charge. Yep. And the crazy thing is when they touch, boom, boom. Annihilation. Total energy release. Massive energy release. It's what makes it so fascinating and mysterious. Totally. And that's why this new research is so groundbreaking. Right. Because they're not annihilating each other. They're chilling us together. That's pretty mind-blowing. Right. So how are they doing this? Okay, so yeah. picture this. Right, I'm picturing. CERN, they've got this super cool helium. Super cool helium. Yeah, and it's in this special state called superfluidity. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, so basically it's a liquid. Right. But it flows with zero, I mean literally zero. No friction. No friction. No resistance. No resistance. Wow. It's wild. That's amazing. So they use this superfluid helium to create this like... This perfect environment. Yeah, super controlled environment wow. for their experiment. Makes sense. And then they introduce antiprotons. Antiprotons. Those are the antimatter counterpart of protons. Exactly. Into this helium. Okay. And everyone's expecting, boom. Annihilation, right? Right. Fireworks, the whole shebang. But instead... Instead... They form this stable hybrid atom. No way! Yeah. So they're just coexisting. Just chilling. That's incredible. It is incredible. So how is that even possible? I mean, how are they stable? Okay, so this is where it gets really interesting. All right, lay it on me. So, antiprotons, right? Yeah. They're way heavier than electrons. Okay. Which they're replacing in these helium atoms. They're substituting the electrons? Exactly. It. So it's kind of like, yeah. think of a bowling ball. Okay, a bowling ball. Versus a ping pong ball. All right, got it. It's way harder to knock that bowling ball off course. That makes sense. Right. So the antiprotons, because they're so heavy, yeah, they move slower. They're more sluggish. Slower, yeah. Okay. And they have these more stable orbits around the helium nucleus. Interesting. Which means they're less likely to bump into anything. Don't annihilate. Annihilate. So the weight difference is actually what's keeping them stable. So it's like the weight is kind of buffering them? Yeah, exactly. It's buffering <laughs> them from that instant annihilation. That's pretty amazing. I know. It completely changes how we think about matter and antimatter. It really does. It really does. So the weight keeps them from annihilating. Yeah. But there's got to be more to it, right? Oh, yeah. There's more. Like, how do they even study these things? Okay. So remember that superfluid helium we talked about? Yeah, the zero friction stuff. That wasn't just for creating a stable environment. Oh, there's more. It also allowed them to do... Some incredible measurements. Measurements of what? Of the hybrid atoms' properties. How so? Okay, so every atom has these things called spectral lines. Spectral lines, like a fingerprint for the atom. Exactly. Okay. And because the helium is in this super fluid state, yeah. its spectral lines are super sharp. Really sharp. Super sharp. Okay. Which means they can study the hybrid atoms in crazy detail. So the superfluid helium acts like a magnifying glass. It's like a superpower microscope. Wow, that's incredible. It is incredible, right. So they were able to create these stable hybrid atoms yep. and study them in detail. In crazy detail. Because of the superfluid helium. Exactly. But how does this connect to the big picture? Right, the big questions. Yeah, the big questions about the universe. Okay, well, remember that whole... Matter, antimatter, asymmetry problem. What we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So like after the Big Bang, uh -huh. equal amounts of matter and antimatter should have been created. Right. But then they should have just annihilated each other. Leaving nothing but energy. Exactly. A big, empty universe. But clear clearly something happened. We're here. We're here. 
Right. So something tipped the scales in favor of matter. And that's the big mystery. The big mystery. Why is there more matter than antimatter? And this is where this research comes in. How so? So by studying these hybrid atoms, yeah. scientists might be able to figure out yeah. what happened in those first moments after the Big Bang. Interesting. Why matter won out over antimatter? Wow. Yeah, we're talking about potentially understanding the origins of the universe. Yeah, it's huge. It's massive. It's really massive. It's really massive. Okay, so big implications for understanding the universe. Big implications. But what about practical applications? Oh, this isn't just theoretical. No. This discovery has some serious real-world potential. Like what? Well, think about it. Okay. Imagine incredibly precise measurement tools. Okay, yeah. Or even completely new types of materials. You mean of antimatter? Based on antimatter. Wow. This could revolutionize technology as we know it. I'm trying to imagine what kind of technology we could create with that. I know, right? Antimatter-powered gadgets. That sounds pretty sci-fi. It does, right. Yeah. But it could be a reality. That's pretty wild. It's wild. But okay, if they can make these hybrid atoms with helium, yeah. what about other elements? That's the crazy part. What do you mean? Imagine a whole new periodic table. Whoa, whoa. Filled with exotic mat antimatter combinations. Like a whole new set of elements. A whole new set of elements. That would be revolutionary. It would be revolutionary. And who knows what kind of crazy properties these new combinations might have. Yeah, like could they be super strong? Super strong. Or conduct electricity in some bizarre way. Or be completely invisible. Invisible elements. That's crazy. We're talking about unlocking a whole new level of the universe. It's mind-boggling. It is mind-boggling. So much we don't know. So much we don't know. But this research is a huge step forward. It's a huge step forward. In understanding the universe. And potentially changing the world as we know it. Absolutely. So to anyone listening... If this sparked your curiosity, yeah. you want to dive deeper into any of this, Definitely. let us know. We've only just scratched the surface. But there's so much more to explore. There's a whole universe out there waiting to be discovered. A whole new universe, literally. Literally. And who knows what amazing things we'll find along the way. I can't wait to find out. Me neither.